Hello there, everybody. Welcome to the Vince and Al podcast. This is Vince's midweek segment number two. I'm your host for today, Vince, and we're going to jump right on in. Hey there, everybody. Um, thanks for tuning in. Once again, I'm Vince. Uh, no Al with me today. Uh, his midweek segment will be coming out next week. So, for those of you who are listening, it is currently Wednesday. I am recording this today on Monday, um, September 11th, uh, 2017. You guys know what that date is. You guys know what that date refers to. I'm not trying to bring you guys down by any means. This is supposed to be uh, an uplifting podcast um, uh, episode segment, however you want to define it. The goal here is for you to walk away feeling a little bit refreshed, not to bog you down. But before I jump into my segment, I want to tell you a quick little story. When the towers, you know, came down on that day, the buildings are surrounding it, seven, eight, how many that there are, seven of them were destroyed completely. The ashes of the towers, you know, just collapsed the other buildings. One building, however, was still standing. Not a single pane of glass was destroyed, marked, scratched. It was completely undamaged. It was an unpenetrable um, piece of architecture. It really was. You might be wondering, well, what, what was this building? This building is a church. It is the same church that George Washington grew up going to. Um... Fun fact for you, when, before he accepted the presidency, um, he ended up going to that church and praying to God that, and this is in New York, keep in mind, he went to that church praying to God that he will become a great president. And then he ended up taking a horse-drawn carriage back, um, I guess where he was from, and uh, then he was inaugurated that, that afternoon. That's crazy. That is crazy. And to me, I don't care if you're religious or not. That's not what this is about. What it is about is that out of this horrific event, that this church, that it it stood untouched. That is a work of God. And that is, that's unbelievable. And if you don't believe, that's fine. That is okay. However, if you, even like I said, if, even if you don't believe, I don't think that's a coincidence. That is crazy. Those other seven buildings were destroyed. This church was hundreds of years old. Those other buildings, they were new architecture. They weren't, you know, wood and brick. They they were there was so much more to them. That's crazy. So if there's anything you could take away from this little segment of mine, that should be the one you should take away. But now I'm gonna jump in to the other aspect of my um podcast in just one moment all right guys uh I kind of had to take a pause there because a story like that, you, you just kind of have to think about that. It's something so powerful. What I'm about to talk about next is it's controversial. That That's fine. Um, I'm just sharing you my experience. What I'm going to be talking about is simply escaping the bubble. By that, I mean... It could be a circle of friends you have. It could be your family. It could be your community. If you escape the bubble that you're currently in and you see what else is out there in the world, 
there is so much more to be thankful for. There's so much that will just open up your eyes and look at every situation in a different light. That's important. I think, th to me, there's three things that eventually shape who you are. To me, I think the biggest thing is the music you listen to. I think the music you listen to influences you so much by your style. I see my influence and who I am through my music, and I think I reflect that greatly. And I'm proud of that. Um, the second biggest thing, I think, is your family. I think, you know, you live in the house with your family um, when you wake up and when you go to bed. So you're bound to be affected by that. It's a fact. The third thing that I think really shapes who you are, especially during those puberty and um, when you're, you know, an adolescent and you're going through all those transition stages, I think the third biggest thing is how much you are exposed to. So when I say escape your bubble, I'm almost encouraging you to see what else is out there. I'm going to give you three quick stories. One is I love to go on bike rides. I think it's something that not a lot of people do. Um, a lot of people prefer taking a walk or jogging. That's awesome. Um, I'm sorry if I'm a little stuffed up. Um, I think that's great. Keep doing that. That's awesome. But for me, I like going on a bike ride because I feel like I can cover more mileage faster. And I also feel like I can explore things much quicker. I love to explore. I love walking through the woods when I can. All that stuff, I'm such a big fan of. Two summers ago, I got on my bike ride and I took a bike ride every single day. The people I met, the people I encountered, which that's the same thing, so scratch that. All the things I opened up my eyes to and the fact that I was getting physical fitness out of it too. It was something that I enjoyed so much. It was that moment of each day of the summer where I could escape what's going on at the house and just have time to myself and enjoy God's beautiful creation of that sunset, of those pines in the woods, all of it. And it was lovely. And that opened up my eyes to be so much more thankful for when, the, when it is sun shining when I wake up. I'm like, I'm glad it's not raining today doesn't sound like that will affect your day, but it will affect your day um, more than you can ever imagine. The second story about escaping your bubble. Just recently, um, I transitioned to a new school. Not for the whole day. I go back to my normal high school um, during the afternoon, but I take an advanced business course at my other school. And I'll talk about my businesses in a further episode if you guys are curious. Um, I take an advanced business course at this other school. And to save money on gas, because I can drive, I choose to take the bus. I've come across a lot of very interesting people. Some good, some bad. And that's okay. Everyone comes from a different background. I'm not going to sit there and judge. However, being on that bus, seeing how certain people act, it really shapes is like, do I want to be just like this kid or do I want to be the polar opposite of him? And many times I found myself saying, once again, not trying to judge any of these people. I'm sure they are great kids, but based on what their language is um, and their actions that are just downright disrespectful in any manner possible, being exposed to certain kids' personality make me say, I don't want to be like this. I don't want to be better than them. I want them to be just as successful as I am in the world. But I want to act in a manner that is the opposite of theirs. Because I think that being much more present, pre, I rather present myself in a respectful light. Because um, I don't think being disrespectful will get you anywhere. Um, or if it has gotten you places, I don't think it's going to get you there any faster than it is being respectful. Um, also with going to a different school, I realized that people are so much more down to earth. They're willing to have a conversation that is true and that is real. And then compared to my old school, you have a conversation and the person 
will be in the hallways telling another person the conversation you just had with them. Essentially, it's like you're talking to someone about one thing, and that person will go blab about what you just talked about to someone else. That's kind of like, well, so there's no privacy rule here. And at the new school, it's just pure conversation. And that's something I haven't had in a while as far as the school setting goes. And that's great. It feels like I'm talking to a friend every day, although they're a stranger. That's great. I think escaping your bubble and making new connections like I did, not only will it better your personality and you'll become so much more sociable and all that, I think it'll just better shape as to who you want to become because you will meet so many people that might be an influence to you. I had a brother that went off to college this year. That's not easy for me. I, I miss him dearly. Um, but from everything I've heard and everything he's told me, everyone at college is so much willing, so much more willing to talk and have a conversation than they were in high school. Because here's the reality. You're no longer in high school. You are going to be someone in the world, and you're taking college to prep you for that. So those people have escaped their bubble, and now essentially they're living on their own. So people are almost forced to make new connections. Lastly, um, with escaping your bubble, it's also about forming a bond with a stranger for a day. Now look. Do not get caught up with the wrong strangers. If something is creepy, you got to get out of that situation. Uh, it's as clear as that. I know that's not something to laugh about, but there are some people that are willing to do some pretty nasty things in this world. Hate to admit it, but it's true. We all know that. However, there are some strangers that you will see every single day that are struggling same as you. Maybe they got something going on in their family. Maybe they got something going on personal. The advice I can give you is if you were going through a struggle, wouldn't you want someone to put a smile on your face? Wouldn't you want someone to cheer you up? If you, I mean, if you just take a good look at someone's eyes, you can tell if, if something's bogging them down. So even if you're not an Adidas guy, but that person's wearing Adidas shoes and you think they're all right, just pass a compliment that guy's way. Um, this, this rule can apply for any scenario, not just shoes. The point is, is compliments can go a long way. And believe it or not, that is escaping your bubble. You don't have to give that guy a compliment. You don't have to start talking to this guy randomly when you're at the line at McDonald's. But if you take that initiative to do that, good for you. Because you're making a new bond. Good for you. You're not just going home in your car like every other guy that was in that McDonald's. If you, I'm a strong believer that if you see a cute girl at the store, or if you're a girl listening and you see a cute guy, dude, like, talk to them. Now, that's not always easy. It's really hard to come up with something to say sometimes. But if you don't talk to them, you missed out on an opportunity. And then you're going to kick yourself in the car ride home. Well, even if she, she, he or she wasn't interested, at least she gave it a shot. Escaping your bubble is not just leaving your friend group. It is going outside of your comfort zone to make new connections. Something I think is really important, um, mostly because I've picked up because I'm hoping to go into the business world. Um, but also, it's just, I feel like there's a good chance you can make someone's day. If you got that girl's number or, got, or, or if you got his number, wouldn't that make your day? By talking to a complete stranger that you're comfortable talking to, there's always a chance that you can make his or her, her day, or that person can make your day. So by escaping your bubble, there's just a lot of possibilities, and I'm a strong advocate for that. Same thing, that if you were to see a guy in, um, in his military garb, and um, you know that he served for us, or he has a veteran's hat, or if you see a, a janitor in your school hallways, how hard is it? to thank them, to escape your bubble, and just to thank them for all the hard work they're doing. At whether they're fighting for you or if they're picking up after you, same can be applied for your parents. I think a, a brief thank you for all your hard work, I don't think that's a whole lot to ask. And that can make their day. I'm saying that from experience. A little something to think about right there.
Um, you know, currently, I'm going to wrap up with this. Currently, we live in such a great world. Um, there's a lot of need for change. But if you're listening and you're in America, which I'm taking you are, um, we, leave a, we, we live a decent life. I mean, we, we do. I mean, you can classify as you got some personal stuff going on or you're not a fan of the presidency. I recognize all that. But we don't have to wake up every morning and we're in danger for our lives. That's something to be so grateful for. That's not what reality is, though. Because one day we're, we are going to have to wake up and we might be fearful that we got to pay a bill. We might be wake up and we might be fearful that... Um, there could be a bad weather conditioning heading towards us and you got to drive to work. Where I'm going with this is that be thankful because the people currently in Florida, the people that were in Texas, those people's bubble that they were in, it got popped in a finger snap. They are now faced with the hard reality of the world. Kids that may have had to grow up because... They needed help out their families. That sucks. It really does. Because you wouldn't want to be put in that position. So with my message here is try to escape your bubble now so you can get comfortable with it. Because it is a great world we live in filled with amazing people to talk to. Not only that, it's that there's so much to be thankful for. If you go out and you take a good look around... And rather than saying, oh, I don't have this, think about what you do have. Because there's so much to be thankful for. I know you see that. I see that. Al sees that. It's a great life we, we live. Every day we continue to fight the good fight. Because it's a great fight. And I, I can't wait to see um, where my life takes me. And I'm not afraid to escape the bubble. And you shouldn't be either. Because it'll open up your eyes to a great world. And one of the reasons that gets me going every morning is today I have a chance to affect someone's life. It's as simple as that. And if you do that every day, I think you're, I think you're doing an all right job. So, hey everybody, thank you so much for tuning in. Uh... This is Vince's midweek segment number two. Next week, Al and I are cooking up something pretty amazing. He's going to do part one, and I'm going to finish off um, that part with the part two. And this is going to be a great mega episode. Uh, stay tuned. It's going to be great. Thanks, guys, for listening. See you next time.